Today we are reading It Takes Two, adapted by Nancy E. Krulik, based on the motion picture. Being an orphan is the pits. Just ask nine-year-old Amanda Lemon. Amanda had no mother or father, but today she was going to meet Mr. and Mrs. Butkus. The Butkuses wanted to adopt Amanda. They wanted her to be part of their family. Mr. and Mrs. Butkus had adopted a lot of kids already. The other orphans at the shelter where Amanda lived said Mr. and Mrs. Butkus were weird. Amanda didn't want to live with them. No way. Sometimes Alyssa Calloway thought being a rich kid wasn't a whole lot better than being an orphan. Alyssa was nine years old. Her mom died when she was born. Alyssa lived with her dad, who was a very rich man. But today, Alyssa got some really bad news. Her dad was going to marry a mean woman. A woman who hated kids and thought they should be sent away to live at school all year long. A woman named Clarice Kensington. Alyssa did not want her dad to marry Clarice. No way. Amanda and Alyssa were completely different. Alyssa knew which fork to use at a fancy dinner. Amanda liked eating sloppy joes with her hands. Alyssa knew how to play the piano. Amanda knew how to play stickball. Alyssa had everything she wished for but no other kids to play with. Amanda had tons of friends to play with, but no family. But the girls had one thing in common. They looked exactly alike. Every summer, Amanda and the other kids from the shelter went to Camp Calloway. The camp was just for orphans. This year after camp, Amanda had to go live with the Bootkus family. Amanda was sad. She didn't want to go. What Amanda really wanted was to be adopted by Diane, the city worker who watched over her. The problem was... Diane couldn't adopt her until she got married, and she didn't have anyone to marry. Still, Amanda had a week of camp ahead of her. A lot could happen in a week. Amanda stood by the waterfront with her camp friends, Anthony, Tiny, Carmen, and Frankie. Across the lake, they could see a huge white mansion. That house is haunted, Anthony said in a spooky voice. I'm not scared, Amanda bragged. I'll bet you guys five bucks I can ring the doorbell. Do it, Carmen said. The bet was on. The kids didn't know that the mansion was really Alyssa Calloway's summer home. Alyssa was inside the house at that very moment. And boy, was she furious. Clarice wanted to sell the big house. Clarice hates this house, Alyssa told her father, Roger Calloway. She thought her dad would be angry too but Roger just smiled. Clarice and I are getting married, he told Alyssa. She's going to be your new mother. Never, Alyssa thought. She had to do something. Alyssa peered through the telescope in her bedroom. She watched the campers across the lake. Those orphans were having so much fun. Alyssa put on her oldest clothes and went downstairs. I lost my mother, she told the butler, Vincenzo. Now Clarice is taking my father away. I have no family and I'm running away. Alyssa raced out the back door and hurried toward camp. A moment later, Amanda and her pals were hiding behind a bush, only a few feet away from the mansion. Amanda knew she had to win the bet. She darted across the lawn and rang the bell. Vincenzo the butler opened the door. Well, if it isn't the little orphan girl, Vincenzo said. He hugged Amanda. Vincenzo thought she was Alyssa. Then he pulled her into the house. Amanda stared at Vincenzo. Vincenzo stared back at her. Let's get you ready for the big party, he told her. Vincenzo led Amanda upstairs. There she saw something really scary. A blonde-haired woman with a white face was walking down the hall. She looked just like a ghost. Amanda gasped. Maybe this place really was haunted. She ran out of the house in fear. Meanwhile, Alyssa raced toward Camp Calloway. Suddenly, a pretty woman ran up to her. It was Diane. I've been looking all over for you, Diane told Alyssa. The kids are playing football. Come on, you're missing all the fun. Diane led Alyssa to a large ball field. Okay, everyone, the team captain said. Protect Amanda. Who's Amanda? Alyssa asked. Everyone thought she was joking. Diane blew a whistle. The team captain grabbed the ball and threw it right at Alyssa. She caught it and smiled. Then she saw the whole blue team rushing toward her. 
Alyssa had never played football. She thought the other kids were trying to hurt her. Alyssa turned and ran away, screaming. You're going the wrong way, the kids hollered. But Alyssa didn't listen. She dashed into the woods and headed for home. Alyssa wasn't the only one running through the woods. At the very same moment, Amanda was racing back to camp. Smack! The girls slammed right into each other. Do you see what I see? Amanda gawked at Alyssa. I don't know what you see, Alyssa answered. But what I see is me. Wait a second, Amanda cried. You live in the Callaway house. And you're the girl from camp, Alyssa exclaimed. They thought I was you, they both said together. What were you doing at camp anyway? Amanda asked. Alyssa smiled. I wanted to be an orphan. It looked like fun. The kids think your house is haunted, Amanda told Alyssa. Who's that scary blonde lady? Is she a ghost? That's Clarice. She's worse than a ghost. Alyssa explained that Clarice was going to marry her father. Tonight was their engagement party. Alyssa didn't want to go. Wait, I have a plan, Amanda announced. You be me, I'll be you. One night only. Tomorrow at noon we switch back. Alyssa nodded happily. It was a great idea. Amanda sneaked into Alyssa's room and slipped on a beautiful party dress. She took a deep breath and hurried down the stairs. Alyssa Calloway, you're as pretty as a picture, a handsome man told her. It was Roger, Alyssa's dad. Amanda grinned and said two words she had never said before. Hi, Daddy. At the party, Clarice asked Amanda to play the piano, but Amanda didn't know how. Alyssa, sweetheart, play for us, Clarice snarled, or you'll never play anything again. I'll play something especially for you, Clarice, Amanda announced. Then she banged, slammed, and crashed on all the keys. That will show her, Amanda thought. While Amanda was banging away at the piano, Alyssa was roasting marshmallows around a campfire. What fun! Soon it was time to go to sleep. Alyssa climbed into her bunk bed and screamed. Someone had put a frog in her bed. Diane ran to comfort her. You should have kissed that frog, Diane told Alyssa. It might have been my Prince Charming. Diane tickled Alyssa until she laughed out loud. No one had ever done that before. Diane was great. Trading places was cool. But before they knew it, it was time to switch back. Amanda and Alyssa met at the stables. Amanda told Alyssa that Clarice had gone to New York. Why is your dad going to marry Clarice? Amanda asked. She's horrible. Yeah, I wish he had met Diane first, Alyssa said. She'd be a great mom. Amanda stared at Alyssa. Alyssa stared back. All they have to do is meet, Amanda began, and fall in love, Alyssa continued, and we could be sisters. They finished together. We can't switch back yet, Amanda told Alyssa. I have a really sneaky plan. That afternoon, Alyssa and Diane went horseback riding. Amanda went riding with Roger. When the adults weren't looking, the girls rode off and met behind some tall bushes. Alyssa handed Amanda a slingshot. Amanda put a small stone into the sling and shot it right at Diane's horse. The horse let out a whinny and bolted. Amanda and Alyssa grinned. Their plan was starting to work. Help! Diane cried. Roger raced over to Diane and pulled her horse to a stop. Just then, a tree branch hit him across the face. He fell to the ground with a thud. Diane quickly helped Roger up. I can take care of that, Diane said. She pointed to a cut on his forehead. Amanda and Alyssa watched them walk side by side toward the mansion. Then the girls hopped on one horse and followed closely behind. The girls hid beneath a table and listened to the grown-ups talking. Roger and Diane were getting along great. Then the phone rang. It was Clarice. Clarice, I can't talk. Someone is here, Roger told her nervously. Who? Clarice wanted to know. Uh, nobody important, Roger said. Diane gasped. Her feelings were really hurt. She stood up and raced back to camp. Roger hung up the phone quickly, but Diane was already gone. 
Alyssa sighed. They're never going to fall in love on their own, she whispered to Amanda. Amanda just grinned. Then we'll have to help them. The next day, Amanda and Alyssa met again. They wrote notes to help get Roger and Diane back together. Alyssa read her note out loud. Dear Diane, I can't stop thinking about you. I must see you. Meet me tonight at 7. Yours truly, Roger Calloway. Perfect, Amanda cried. And my note will tell Diane to meet Roger. They'll see each other again and fall in love. All they had to do now was wait. Back at the mansion, Amanda got a big surprise. Clarice was back from New York. We can't wait a minute longer, Clarice told Roger. We have to get married tomorrow. Clarice glared at Amanda. We're going to the city. Tonight. Pack your things, Alyssa, she ordered. Amanda gaped at Clarice. But I'm not Alyssa, she cried. I'm Amanda. Nobody was listening. When Alyssa got back to camp, she had a big surprise, too. Mr. and Mrs. Butkus were there, waiting to take her home with them. Come to Mama, Amanda, sweetheart, Mrs. Butkus called. Alyssa stared at her in shock. Uh, look, there's been a big mistake. My name's not Amanda, she said. They didn't listen, either. Alyssa went home with Mr. and Mrs. Butkus. They were so mean. They made kids work in their junkyard. They made them work hard. As soon as she could, Alyssa found a phone and called Amanda in New York. These Butkus people are scary, she told Amanda. You gotta get me out of here. Fast. Amanda had news for Alyssa, too. Your dad's getting married at noon, she said. We have two hours and twelve minutes to stop him. Amanda had a plan. She would tell Vincenzo who she really was. He would help rescue Alyssa. And then they would stop the wedding. Amanda put on her fancy flower girl's dress. Then she showed Vincenzo a scar on her head. Tell me how I got this scar, she demanded. Vincenzo gasped. He had never seen the scar before. You're not Alyssa, he cried. Then Alyssa is... In a whole lot of trouble, Amanda told him. Vincenzo and Amanda drove to Diane's office in the city. He told Diane to find the real Alyssa and bring her to Roger's wedding by noon. They had only one hour left. It was almost noon. Where were Diane and Alyssa? Amanda wondered. In a few minutes, Roger and Clarice would be married. Diane rescued Alyssa from the Bootkiss family. They raced through New York City. Alyssa ran inside the church. Daddy, wait, she cried. She ran toward Roger. Amanda stood next to him. There are two of them, Clarice screamed in horror. Stop, Roger said. I can't marry Clarice. Roger rushed up to Diane. He gave her a long kiss. Then Roger looked at the two girls. I can't tell which is Alyssa and which is Amanda. We'll have to keep them both. We? Diane asked. Amanda held her breath. Alyssa held hers. That's right, Roger said. We'll be one big, happy family. All right. Roger and Diane were getting married. Amanda and Alyssa held out their hands for another high five. Put her there, Amanda began. Sister, Alyssa finished for her. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story. Please be sure to like and subscribe.